Yes, we believe. If y'all want to see a miracle, you first have to believe. You have to believe God first, because if you don't believe, it shall not come to pass. I don't know about you, but I am yet excited. <clears throat> I'm excited about what the Lord has done, and I am excited about what the Lord is getting ready to do. And see, a lot of people don't get excited. You got to come to God with a spirit of expectancy. So I expect God to do all these miraculous things in my life. I expect God to bless me. I expect God to heal my body, heal my mind. I expect him to do that. And I know he can do it because the Bible says he's able to do exceedingly above, above all that we ask I think according to the power that working inside of us. <laughs> we, were in, we were in Bible class last night and we got on this conversation on last night, we were talking about the gifts of helps. We was talking about the gifts of helps. And a lot of time when you read the scriptures and you don't pay a whole lot of attention to what you're reading, you just hit something in the Bible and just go over it. Last night we deal with leadership and how that gifts of help flow along with the idea of being a leader. Uh, because if you are going to be an effective leader, first thing you will have to learn how to do is to serve. A lot of people don't realize seven is more great and more important than having people serve you. And once you get that revelation, God will turn things around in your favor like you've never seen before. So we're going to deal with the gift of helps. I'm waiting for a few more people to come on, but we're going to deal with the gift of helps. Now we're going to go back over this prayer request list right quick, and we're going to get ready to pray. And immediately following the prayers, we're going to get into this lesson about the gift of helps. And I was pretty much thinking along the line that I probably would spend a day or so on this particular lesson. But the more deeper I get into it, the more 
powerful it is. And that's the reason why I want to spend a little extra time on it. Amen. I said I want to spend a little extra time on this particular lesson about the gifts of help. All right. Now, first thing is we want to deal with here is the prayer request list. Please get your paper and pen out because the prayer request list has changed. In the middle of the prayer request list, we do have a praise report coming forth. Amen. And get your paper and pen out for the write down the prayer request list. Also, for the write down the scriptures that we're going to discuss. All right, enough of that. Time for us to get started. Please write these names down. John Denton. He was a co worker with one of my brother in laws. And um, he's suffering from cancer. And they couldn't do surgery on him, but I think they are doing chemo. Continue to pray for Pastor Patricia Hatch. She had at least three strokes. So let us continue to pray for her. Continue to pray for Deacon James Williams. Been dealing with some blood pressure problem and some anxiety problem. Continue to pray for my daughter-in-law, Jessica Nixon. She had been having some diabetes problems. Thank God for Minister Brenda Wallace. She had a procedure done, but she was at church on Sunday. We want to continue to pray for Apostle Brown out of Monroe, Louisiana. Stage two pancreatic cancer, diabetes, and HIV. Now to the praise report, Mr. Jesse Johnson. The gentleman we were praying for that has stayed for prostate cancer, who were undergoing chemo. I heard that he has gained weight, and I heard that um, his numbers are looking better. And that ought to make you feel proud that you were partaking in the prayers, praying for this gentleman, whom I don't know. Pray for my brother, William Lord Nixon Sr. He been diagnosed also with prostate cancer and the doctor said he has progressed. Continue to pray for Sister Jackie Floyd for complete healing in her body. And we want to pray for all of our healthcare workers and hospital workers, all of these people that put their lives on the line every day. Pray for the apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, the evangelists. Pray for our presiding bishop of the Pentecostal Seminary World, Bishop Theodore Brooks Jr. First Lady Janice Brooks, his family, staff, congregation. Pray for Bishop Mark Talbot, our first assistant. And pray for his family, staff, and congregation. Pray for Bishop Michael Hanna and Lady Jeanette Hanna and his family staff also in congregation. I want to pray for the PAW Bishop Board, the State Bishop, the Suffolk Bishops, 
auxiliary leaders and the staff. And please pray for the LDC, Louisiana District Council, and Bishop James Eric Daniel, and, excuse me, Lady Jeanette Daniel. Pray for all of our regional bishops, our district elders, all of our pastors, uh, all the deacons, executive board, state office, auxiliary leaders, and the staff. And when you're praying for these individuals, pray for their families also. Pray for all the political leaders around the world that the things that they do and that God would transform their minds out the kingdom of darkness and to the kingdom of his dear son Jesus, that these people would do what's right and just in the eyes of God. All right, all right. I want to remind you before we start playing this music that the music you're going to hear playing in the background, we do not own the rights to this music. Y'all ready to get busy? Are uh, y'all ready to pray? Are y'all ready to cry out to God? Please pray for the healing of this nation. And you know it's time for us to get wild. Up. And um, the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. <clears throat> and I come to you today as known. Talking, teaching, preaching, and reaching. Telling people about Pentecostal experiences and Pentecostal truth and apostolic doctrine. So this time I want everybody to pray with us and pray for us. Let's cry out to God for the healing of this nation, for the healing of all these people on the prayer request list. And let us pray for unity in the body of Christ. So if you would, I've been going all morning and now I'm not sleeping. If you would, help us pray. <laughs> Gracious Father, even now we humble ourselves in thine sight because in you, God, we live, we move, we have our being. And God, according to your word, you say, lean not to your own understanding. But you say, in all of our ways, acknowledge you. And God, I come acknowledging you right now that you're the only true wise God. There's none like unto you. And God, we pray and ask you to strengthen us where we know that we're torn down. God, let us speak your word, God. Revelation knowledge with understanding. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray and ask you to add such as should be added to the body of Christ. God, add what should, as should be added in the LDC. But God, now we come in right now and ask you to add to the way of Holy Church ministry. Daily, such as should be saved. And God, we give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise. And God, we pray for justice in this country. And justice, God, around the world. And Father, we come right now asking for a miracle because we believe. Yes, we believe you for it. We believe that you're able to do exceeding and bring all the acts of faith according to the power that working inside of us. God bring forth a revival in this land. God, let your power, let your anointing, let it break forth right now. God, touch everyone on this prayer request list. God, he has delivered and set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. And God, everybody that's on you by live stream. We decree and declare that things are changing, things are getting better. And God, we pray that you continue to bring your people forward, God. One mind, one spirit, one accord to do your will. According to your word, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. How many of y'all believe? How many of y'all believe God for whatever it is that you've been praying for? I want to remind y'all that we do not own the right to the music you're playing on in the background. A little bit tired today. But if you pray, I'll teach you and I'll preach. If you pray, amen. Because thank God, Brother Paul, thank God for the young king coming in. All right, let's get to this lesson at hand today. The gift of helps. Gift 
uh, helps. Now we discussed this yesterday. And we talked about the gift of helps. And we talked about people that just yield themselves to the spirit of God to be a blessing and a help to somebody else. So when you look at the gift of helps, it's a servant gift. That gift, it enables a believer to work gladly behind the scenes in order that God's work be fulfilled. It is the special ability God gives to some to serve the church in supporting role in a supporting role or to invest their talents in the life in the ministry of other members. It is the divine enablement to accomplish practical and necessary tasks which free up, support, and meet the needs of others. Powerful. The Bible said, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. The gifts of help, it motivates you. It encourages you when you see somebody else that need help, and you came to the rescue. My God, powerful gift. <laughs> we discussed this last night in a Bible class. When the Bible talked about how the church was set up, it said, first they put in apostles, secondarily, prophets, thirdly, teachers. So now teachers and preachers should be pretty much interchangeable. Because you notice it didn't say pastors, but said teachers. Well, the pastor have the most awesome responsibility to teach and reach all the people, not just some of the people, not just some of the time, but reach all the people all the time. Are you listening to me? So now let's deal with this. Let's deal with it. Because it's time for us to get wilder. Don't you forget to like, tag, and, tag, and share. Now, the gift of helps. It is the divine enablement to accomplish practical and necessary tasks which free up, support, and meet the needs of others. You know, when you look at this gift, it's not about you. It's not about you and yours. It's all about who can I help? Thank God, Sister Anna and Maiden coming on. Who can I help? Thank God for advantage Daniel Hillary coming on. Who can I help? I feel as though that may be the greatest gift because when you operate in the gift of helps, there's nothing selfish about what you're doing. Everything you're doing, you're doing it as unto God. And most of the stuff you're doing, you're doing it behind the scene. I had a couple of sisters the other day Pretty much says that's the area where they want to work in, the gift of helps. Say, so because they're not doing what they do for their own glory, or own self grandizement. But they're doing what they do to try to help the church go forward, help be a blessing in the life of your brothers and sisters in Christ. That's all right. Thank God, Sister Chantel Davis. I'm doing great. I am doing great. Hope you and your family are doing well. Amen. I got that. 
we'll be praying for him. Amen. Now, can I take a minute? Think about this. A person with the gift of helps, they like to work behind the scenes. They don't like to be up front. They don't need, they don't need that. They know who they are and they're comfortable in their own skin. When you're comfortable with who you are, when you're comfortable in your own skin, that's the time where God can use you in a miraculous way. Now let's go to the word of the Lord. Let's view let's deal with let me see where I want to pick this up. John chapter 13. John chapter 13, verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover. When Jesus knew that his hour was come, were come. And unto the Father. Father, loving heaven, loved his own which were in the world. He loved them to the end. So now God will love you. Thank God, Mother Keller coming on. Thank God, Sister Harris coming on. God bless y'all. God will love you unto the end. Did y'all get that? Somebody told me one day, he said, God will not send his people to hell. Mm -hmm. God will not send his people to hell, but you can send yourself. Are you with me? And so you should be serious about your salvation. And you ought to be serious about getting to work in the body of Christ. You ought to be serious about doing what God has called you to do. Now, everybody can operate in the gift of health. All you have to do is make yourself available. Let's go to John 13. Let's, let's read. Let's read. I want to start at verse number one. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being in it, the devil having uh, now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Verse number three, Jesus, knowing that the Father had, <clears throat> had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he rises from supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and girded himself. The Lord was, was not so much concerned on people serving him or waiting on him as he was about waiting on them. Are you with me? So now thank God for Pastor Silas Apoli coming in. Thank God for Evangelist Daniel Hillary coming on. God bless my Kenyan brothers. Now catch this. Verse number four, he rises from supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and girded himself. And when he had poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel, wherewith he was too to be girded. Then come he to Simon Peter. And Peter said unto him, Lord, do as thou wash my feet. Jesus answered and said unto him, Well, I do. What I do, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Verse number nine.
And verse number nine, we find that Peter here, still the same Peter, he doesn't change. Let me get my scripture back up. Now, excuse me. Jesus presented himself in such a humble, unique manner. And the Bible tells us, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So now when you are humble, when you're meek, when you're very hospitable, you can work with people. You can help other people fulfill their goals and destiny. The Bible says Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. Verse number four, he rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. Are you with me? And when you look at verse number uh, five, the Bible says in verse four, he took a towel, he girded himself. Verse number five says unto us, after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Thank God for Ella Ford coming on. <clears throat> Most people don't know how to be a servant. Most people don't know how to be blessed. How many of y'all remember when Elijah followed Elijah? Uh, Elijah followed Elijah everywhere he went. <laughs> the prophet told him to go back. He, he, he wouldn't, he would not go back. He would not stop following. He would not stop serving. And because of his tenacity, because he was so uh, loyal, so faithful, when Elijah got ready to be taken away, before he got ready to be taken away, we found that Elisha had a request. When Elijah wanted to know what, what it is you want, some people say Alicia. So just for the distinction between the two names, we'll say Elijah and Elisha. But anyway, he never stopped serving. So he told Elijah, I want a double portion of your spirit. Elijah told him, says a hard thing, but if you see me when I'm taken away, it shall be granted to you. So to make a long story short, Elijah stayed right there with Elijah until he was taken away. As long as the prophet Elijah was alive and doing well. Now I want you to understand that Elijah and Elijah had been working together, walking together, probably praying together. But now Elisha asked for a hard thing. He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. Elijah told him, say, well, you asked a hard thing. He tells him that if you see me when I'm taken away, it shall be granted to you. So a lot of time we don't want to be a servant because we don't see the rewards of it not realizing that God sees, God hears, God not sleep, and God not broke. I was having a conversation, I think this morning with somebody about gas prices. I very seldom look at gas prices. It is what it is. So this is not part of my lesson, but let me throw this in. Quit focusing on gas prices and start focusing on 
your soulless man. And then God will bless you spiritually and financially. God will heal your body. God will give you an increase. Oh, Lord Jesus. That's why the Bible says he that coming to God must first believe that he is and that he is rewarded to them that diligently seek him. So when you become a servant, that's the key to your greatness. All right, let's go just a little bit further. Verse number five of the 13th chapter of the book of John. And after that, he poured water into a basin, began to wash the disciples' feet and wiped them with the towel wherewith he was good. Are you with me? Elijah did not have enough time to be sitting around wondering what God was going to do. He just stepped into the arena of what God was getting ready to do. Satan attacked his family, I mean, attacked his children. I done switched over to Job now. When Satan attacked his family, destroyed his children, robbed him of his wealth. The one thing Satan could not rob him of was his integrity. So we as people of God, we must have integrity. We must be able for people to trust us. So now, look at Jesus. Verse number six, the Bible says, Then come it, he to Simon Peter, and, and Peter said unto him, Lord, thou doest thou wash my feet? Now, Jesus is our perfect example of a person operating with the gifts of help. Jesus was our perfect example. Let me say it again. Operating in the gifts of healing. You need to take that, you need to digest that, you need to study that. Because we're supposed to be striving to be like him. All right, verse number six, seven. Jesus answered and said unto him, what I do thou knowest not, but thou shalt know hereafter. In other words, Peter, you don't even have the, you don't even have the revelation what God is getting ready to do. Verse number eight, the Bible said, Peter said unto him, it's all right, you can talk to the Lord every now and then. It is all right. But whenever you begin to talk to God, the first person God talked to, about, to you about is you. That's why a lot of people don't have a great devotional time. Because they're afraid of what God going to show them inside of them. Stay with me. First number eight. Thank God, Sister Ashley, coming on. Verse number eight of the 13th chapter of the book of John. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I wash not thee not, if I wash thee not, I have no power. Did you hear me? The Bible said, Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Peter. Did not get the revelation what the Lord was saying. He was yet thinking naturally and Jesus was talking spiritual. Come on. Verse number 10. Out of John chapter 13. Jesus said to him, he that is washed needed not save to wash his feet, but is clearly every whit. And ye are clean. But not all. See, a lot of people get upset because everybody in the church is not saved. That's all right. Forget about the ones that are not saved. Focus on the ones that are saved. 
Are y'all with me? So now Peter wanted to wash him all over. I want you to wash just my feet. I got to hear from you. So Peter was bold enough to ask him. My God, my God. Stay with me. Peter didn't get the revelation that serving is the way to go up. Serving is the way to become great. Look at what the Bible says. Verse number, verse number 10. Hold on, let me see. I think I skipped a verse here. No, I'm right on it. Verse number 10. Jesus said to him, he that is washed needed not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye which are clean, but not all. The Lord knew who was going to betray him. He knew Jesus was going to betray him. I need you to catch this. Stay with me. Stay with me. Like I first said, I'm tired and sleepy today. But just stay with me. Thank God, Sister Jones coming on. Verse number 11 of 13 chapter the book of John say, for he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, you're not all clean. Thank God, Brother Bell coming on. And the Bible says in verse number 12, so after he had washed their feet, had taken his garments, and was set down again. He said unto them, know ye what I have done to you? The Lord said, look, do you know what I did? They probably were thinking in the natural, yeah, you washed our feet. I wonder how Judas felt. I wonder how Judas felt after he got his feet washed by the master. <laughs> now, Stay with me because I'm going somewhere with this. And what we're illustrating right here is how Jesus is flowing under the gifts of help. Now, you know, anybody probably would have been willing to help. Most of those disciples but would you watch Judas' feet? Look at verse number 12. The Bible says, so after they had washed their feet and had taken his garments, went down again, sat down again. He said unto them, know ye what I've done it unto you? I know y'all experienced it. I know y'all saw when I kneeled down. I know y'all saw when I took the towel and girded myself. Now I want to know what you feel. How you think. Are you fulfilling God's purpose? Or are you just going through the motion? The Lord is looking for somebody that's so dedicated that he, they will fulfill. God's mandate. Are you with me? The Bible says, so after he had washed their feet, or the disciples' feet, had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, have ye, know ye what I have done unto your cousin? Do you realize what I've done? Verse number 13. Stay with me. The Bible says, he said, you call me master and Lord, and you say, well, for so and so I am. Come on, talk to me. You know, Jesus did not say exact what he was saying. 
He flipped the script, put it back on them. I need to know whether you're a child of God or not. Now, why, Lord? Why? Because I'm teaching you, I'm training you, and I have three years of experience. I can help you if you just acknowledge who I am, just honor me. But the Lord was trying to let Peter see what does it take to become great in the eyes of God. The only way you can become great, you must begin to serve. Thank God for Sister Nixon coming on. Sister Crystal, God bless you. Now, I feel it's so important that the Lord left this on record. That you and I will not be seeking some high position. Because the Bible said gift and calling are without repentance. We want to be in a place where we could be comfortable, a place where we could eat, take our shoes off, and all that kind of good stuff. But we have parents and grandparents and stuff that went before us and made the crooked road straight for us. Are y'all with me? And now we have gotten to the point where we may have people waiting on us. But I want you to remember, when you have somebody waiting on you, they are greater than you. I don't think y'all caught that. I said, when you have somebody griping, complaining all the time, doing stuff all the time, and they have it all together. Come on, talk to me. I said, they act like they have it all together, but on the inside, they don't have it all together. But God put his spirit inside of you. God put purpose in your life. That when you see something need to be done, especially around the house of God, you don't sit around waiting, so who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? No, we need to get up and get busy and make it happen. Are you listening to me? Because if you do not make some things happen for yourself, nobody else is going to be able to help you. The Bible talks about when young men in the church are going there fishing. No women allowed. I think I finally figured that out why brothers do that. Because they're trying to get some round. They're trying to get some round their responsibility. And so I just appreciate y'all bearing along with me today. Praise the Lord. Amen. I thank God for Evangelist King. I don't know what God may have laid up on her heart, but that's the spirit of a sinner. So Pope Paz was tired and sleepy as she came to the rescue. And I'm just going to let the last nine minutes just let God have his way in the hands of Evangelist Deborah Jean King. Uh, <laughs> Hello, everyone. How y'all doing out there today? Hopefully, and pray to God, all is well. Thank God. Thank God for such powerful teaching. Amen. Bless his soul. Y'all pray much for our bishop. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. He's doing a lot. Amen. So y'all keep him lifted up. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Well, we thank him for a word from him on today. We getting ready to pray. We thank God for what he's trying to instill in us, amen, that the greatest among us is a servant. So if we are serving, amen, God's going to honor that. He's going to do that for us. Whatever we want from God, when we humble ourselves as a little child and come before him and whatever you say, do God. The Bible says, whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might, amen. He might say, that's not my gift. That's my, not my calling. I have worked in so many things that have not been my gift. But I appreciate God because one thing about him, if you do something out of the sincereness of your heart, he's going to 
direct you. He's going to lead you. Maybe that's not your calling. Maybe that's not your gift. But if we just be obedient and move when God say move, amen, he'll do all that for us that we're asking him for. So y'all pray much for us as well. Amen. God, we come today repenting for everything that's in us, God, that's not like you. We ask you even now, God, that you are destroyed at the root, the very core and cause of it. Create within me, God, a clean heart. Renew within me a right spirit that my prayers will not only be heard, God, but they will be answered. I thank you, Lord God, for being a keep on my mind, a keep on my soul, Lord God, a keep on my heart. I thank you right now for our leaders, oh God. I ask you, Lord God, continually bless Bishop, First Lady Nixon, Lord God, meet every need in their lives, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for his diligence, oh God, to teach us, Lord God, and to be faithful, Lord God, we thank you right now. We ask you to look on Bishop Daniel, First Lady Daniel, Bishop Brooks, First Lady Brooks, oh God. We ask you, Lord God, continue to give these men and women of God wisdom, knowledge, and understanding how to lead your people forward, God. We thank you right now for all the pastors, the prophets, uh, the apostles, all the teachers, Lord God. We thank you for all of those that in the fivefold ministry, the evangelists, Lord God, we thank you right now, God, for them listening on today, God. We ask you to bless their ministry. Add to the church, God, such as you see fit, God. We thank you in advance for the souls that are coming in, God. We thank you, Lord God, for the fruit, Lord God. And we believe in you, Lord God, that it will remain, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you're going to send us out as laborers, Lord God, in the vineyard, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we're going in the highways, in the bottom and we're compelling men and women to come, God. We thank you for putting it on our hearts, putting it in our spirit. We're speaking those things that be not as though they already are, God. We thank you. We praise in you. We honor you, Lord God, because we know, God, and we willing and obedient, Lord God. We're going to eat the good of the land. We thank you, Lord God, no matter what the gas prices look like, no matter what the economy look like, God. We know, God, that you're going to provide every need, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that things are laid up for us, oh God. All we got to do is walk in it, oh God. All we got to do is be obedient to the word of God. And there's nothing that he will withhold from us. And we just line up and walk up walk upright according to the will of God. He will not see. He, he said in his word, he never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. So we don't have to worry about what's going on in the world because God's going to take care of his own. And for that, we praise you, Lord God. For that, we honor you, Lord God. That provisions are already made, Lord God. Even before we see it, we're giving you praise in advance, Lord God, that our cups are running over, Lord God, both natural and spiritually, Lord God. We thank you, we honor you, Lord God, because we know there is none like you. There is none like you, and we praise you, Lord God, for Evangelist Callan Bell seeing another year, Lord God. We lift her up before you, Lord God. We ask you to continue, Lord God, strengthen her, her mind her body, her soul, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, add years to her life, God, in the name of Jesus, because we know you're able, we know you can, Lord God, and whatever she stand in the need of, God, grant it to her in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for all those that's out there praying on others' behalf. We lift you up before God today. We trust in God that he's going to supply all your needs according to his richness in glory. And we praise you for everything, God, that you've already done for us, God. We honor you today because we know there is none like you, God. It's nothing, Lord God, that we ask you for that you're not able to give it to us. As long as it's lining up according to your will, God, we know, God, that it will be done. And we praise you, God. God, we ask you right now, look on our president, our vice president, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for what they're doing. But Lord, we know without you, they only can do so much. But with you, all things are possible, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for those that are struggling. We ask you, Lord God, add to them such as you see fit, God. We know that you've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread, God. So we trust in you, Lord God, in Africa. We trust in you, 
Lord God, in all these countries, Lord God, that's struggling. We believe in you, Lord God, that you're going to add to them, God. And we thank you. We praise you, Lord God. We're not going to wait on the manifestation. We're going to praise you in advance because we know it's already done. In Jesus' name, we pray today, God. We're just walking in it, God. We're going to talk the word. We're going to live the word, God. We're going to trust you, God, because we know that it's in your power and it's in your will for the do it, God. In the name of Jesus, we praise you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for all the elderly, Lord God, that's in our church, that in the surrounding church. We ask you, Lord God, that you continue to bless them, keep them, Lord God. Every area in their lives, God, they're struggling with. We know, God, that they're older, God, but we know, God, that you have youth, God, that you can add to their lives, oh God. And we trust in you, Lord God, that you're going to strengthen another buckler, Lord God, that you're going to work on her mind, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we stand it on the word, God. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord God, for Mother William, Mother Sanders, Mother Jackson. Oh, we thank you, Lord God, for Mother Smith, God. We praise you, Lord God, for these elderly people. Papa Willie, Lord God, Sister O'Seal, we thank you, God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, we honor you on today. We honor your word, Lord God. We honor your name, God, because your name is high above everything every name, God. We thank you, God, because without you, we can't do nothing, God. But with you, all things are possible. And look on Sister Stevenson, God, and I'm trying not to leave out anybody, but for all those, Lord God, that I left out, God, I ask you, Lord God, that you continue to bless them. Keep them, Lord God. And we're going to stand on your word, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray today. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. In the hands of Bishop Nixon. Nothing is impossible. Yes, yes. God have a miracle just for you. All right, all right. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all know what time it is. It's time for the meeting to leave you. Pray for us. I've been running all morning. Amen. Thank God for Sister Lanelle. God bless you, baby. You still my girl. All right. Until tomorrow, same time. Now I hope and pray tomorrow I won't be wiped out like I was today. I was just totally exhausted. I've been going ever since I got up this morning. So pray for us that tomorrow we'll come back. God, go touch your heart and your mind with a word because there's a word from the Lord. And the word I want to leave you with today that I love you and I love you to life. 